magnesium the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about management of high cholesterol high cholesterol is one of the most important uh, etiology of atherosclerotic diseases like uh, coronary artery disease stroke peripheral uh, vascular diseases but we don't know whether it is the only uh, factor which can produce all these problems there are multi uh, multiple factors uh, which can produce atherosclerosis like it can be smoking it can be sedentary lifestyle obesity alcoholism stress so many other factors also involved so cholesterol is only one of the problems which can lead to atherosclerosis and many patients who is having cholesterol uh, may not have any heart disease or stroke but patient who have mild cholesterol with other factors like smoking sedentary lifestyle lot of junk foods can develop uh, uh, stroke or heart attack without high cholesterol also so cholesterol is not the only factor which can determine whether the patient will develop uh, uh, atherosclerotic diseases whatever it is uh, we will see what are the problems in cholesterol how will you diagnose dyslipidemia normally if, when we talk about dyslipidemia uh, that means when we do cholesterol testing lipid profile fasting lipid profile a fasting lipid profile means at least 8 hours patient should not take any uh, any food uh, they can take water if they want and morning they have to take a blood uh, complete blood panel for cholesterol levels in that you can see total cholesterol is there if it is more than 200 it is significant ldl cholesterol more than 130 mg per deciliter it is significant hdl less than 40 there is also very important vldl more than 145 it is important triglyceride again it is more than 130 it is important that means in a lipid profile panel hdl is one group that is a good cholesterol if the levels are low it is bad all other cholesterols are bad cholesterol if the levels are increased then it then also it is bad now there are uh, different causes for uh, dyslipidemia it may be primary primary means without any reason the patient's cholesterol is very high that means it's a familial problem uh, familial problem means uh, parents can have same problem uh, grandparents may have same problem brothers sisters other siblings can have same problem that is familial secondary causes like diabetes hypothyroidism nephrotic syndrome obstructive liver disease uh, drugs like uh, uh, steroids progesterones thiazides beta blockers bile acids resins anabolic steroids smoking so many other conditions like menopause menopause is one important uh, problem in uh, dyslipidemia what we have to understand is a patient who is young who is uh, like female patient who is young who have menstrual regular menstrual periods even if the cholesterol is high that may not produce dyslipidemia or atherosclerosis because of the uh, protection from the female hormones that can prevent atherosclerotic diseases so post menopausal lady will have a double risk of uh, uh, like two fold uh, higher risk of uh, atherosclerotic diseases than a male with uh, male of same age so menopause is a very important factor which can produce um, atherosclerotic diseases other conditions like uh, chronic renal failure obesity uh, alcoholism all these things can produce uh, various types of uh, Uh, dyslipidemias now when we talk about the symptoms most of the patients who have high cholesterol may not have any symptoms that is very important like uh, hypertension here also many patients will not have any symptoms they suddenly present with stroke or myocardial infarction but nowadays we have um, uh, health checkups in that uh, most of the time 
uh, we involved uh, fasting lipid profile so that we can pick up these problems very early even in childhood itself we can pick up uh, hypercholesterolemia so normally it does not have any clinical feature high triglyceride patients can have acute pancreatitis not very common uh, sam uh, santomas uh, or uh, 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 yellow shadows uh, around the eye that we'll see afterwards can be there in some patients tendon santomas can be there arcus that is in the eyes eye examination you can see arcus uh, in the cornea can be uh, present uh, joint pains can be there in some patients uh, tendon uh, pain can be there in some patients but uh, however we see all these findings in textbooks most of the patients a major group of patients who is having dyslipidemia may not have any clinical finding that is a problem in dyslipidemia now these are the two important findings uh, you can see in patients who is having dyslipidemia one is uh, uh, sandal asthma you can see on the eyelids uh, yellow patches tendon sandomas that also you can see in the second picture another important finding is arcus arcus in the eyes that is also a very important finding seen in uh, dyslipidemia now what happens if the cholesterol is very high in our blood Uh, you can see here in this picture the first picture which shows that that's a blood vessel uh, normal flow then slowly cholesterol accumulates uh, in the lumen cholesterol platelets fibrin all these things produce plaque in the uh, uh, in the arteries slowly the lumen become very narrow blood circulation will come down and sometimes this plaque can rupture and completely obstruct the arteries that may lead to acute stroke myocardial infarction peripheral arterial diseases like that so because of this atherosclerosis patient can have coronary artery disease carotid or vertebral artery stenosis stroke peripheral arterial disorders aortic aneurysm rupture all these things can can be produced by cholesterol but remember cholesterol is not only the reason for uh, this problem it can be an associated problem like uh, obesity uh, sedentary lifestyle food habits smoking stress alcoholism so so many other factors are there cholesterol cholesterol alone may not produce all these things that's why nowadays uh, the cholesterol levels whatever Uh, maybe the levels many physicians are not treating not treating this problem uh, in a patient who does not have any other risk factors we have to advise only uh, regular uh, physical exercise relaxation exercise like that now we can see the risk classification of hypercholesterolemia various guidelines say various uh, uh, various Uh, levels because these levels are not that important that all depends on the associated factors like a patient who is having dyslipidemia with diabetes they have two problems the chance of atherosclerosis is very high a patient who is having high cholesterol with severe smoking they have uh, dual risk factors so a patient who is having a risk factor with cholesterol will have more impact on atherosclerosis than a, a simple athero simple uh, dyslipidemia in a patient who is not having any other risk factors however we will see the uh, risk classification uh, total cholesterol desirable level is less than 200 ldl less than 120 hdl more than 60 triglyceride less than 150 borderline risk is 200 to 239 one 130 to 159 35 to 59 150 to 199 high risk is more than 240 more than 160 less than 35 200 to oh, 500 but remember even you are thinking the desirable level that itself can be abnormal when you have a patient a patient who is having 
these levels with uncontrolled diabetes or this levels with severe smoking or this level with stress severe stress all these things uh, can contribute to atherosclerosis so cholesterol alone is not a important risk factor cholesterol adds uh, some uh, issues when there is adds some problem uh, with uh, with you have a associated uh, other risk factors now when to treat this lip dyslipidemia that is also very important that depends on the clinical scenario there are various guidelines like a patient who is having diabetes there is a guideline patient is having a dyslipidemia with coronary artery, artery disease another guideline so there are various uh, guidelines but we will be see, seeing a general guideline here uh, a patient who is having uh, cad or cad equivalent that is diabetes in that if ldl is more than 100 that is very important when we are talking about dyslipidemia in that most important factor is low density lipoprotein so ldl more than 100 mg deciliter we have to give an option for starting uh, anti cholesterol drug to that patient that is because when the ldl level is more than 100 itself many patients are developing uh, coronary artery disease in a patient who is having diabetes or any other previous history of uh, coronary artery disease. They have high chance of uh, all these things and the target for uh, this type of patient is less than 70. So depending on other risk factors the, uh, the levels are varying but what we have to understand is a patient who is having coronary artery disease or coronary artery disease equivalent like diabetes or even if you take severe smoking, heavy smoking and if the cholesterol level LDL is more than 100 better to treat the patient and reduce the cholesterol level to less than 70 and try to control the other risk factor also that is also equally important because if you don't control the uh, cholesterol if you don't control the blood sugar values then that itself will add to the uh, 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 atherosclerosis uh, adversely. Now there is a uh, risk score calculation that is called as ASCVD calculation atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk calculation. If you want to practice properly we have to calculate the score and according to the score we can place the patient on statins or uh, other drugs but in routine practice this is not possible so we just take uh, that ldl level as 100 if there is a coronary disease or coronary equivalent we keep it less than 70. now there are multifactorial steps multiple steps which which we can uh, reduce the problem uh, in a patient who is having uh, atherosclerosis these are called as primary prevention of coronary vascular disease you can ask the patient to do regular exercise like perform at least 30 minutes daily walking aspirin can be started 75 milligram blood sugar, blood pressure should be controlled properly cholesterol should be controlled with either dieting or statins cigarette smoking should be stopped diet should be controlled high cholesterol uh, food items should be avoided you should add more vegetables to the food weight should be reduced proper weight uh, control is very very important in atherosclerosis diabetes is another important uh, factor that should be considered as uh, uh, coronary artery disease equivalent now lifestyle modification is very important we have to advise the patient to reduce his weight so regular physical activities is very important 30 minutes walking is very very important even if you uh, if you, even if you don't start any medication for at least three four months if the patient is doing regular exercise that can improve the circulation that can reduce the atherosclerosis so even if the cholesterol is very high if the patient is doing regular exercise it can prevent most of the atherosclerotic diseases so in the management of high cholesterol exercise has got very important role next is diet uh, there are a lot of debates regarding diet control in various diseases uh, some believe that diet has got uh, very less uh, limited role in uh, disease control 
but however uh, the diet advised here is uh, uh, saturated fat should be less than 7 percent cholesterol 200 less than 200 milligram per deciliter fiber should be 10 to 20 gram fiber is very important uh, fiber should be involved in diet in both in dyslipidemia and diabetes so diet control is very important alcohol should be restricted very small amount like uh, 30 ml per day may be beneficial for the patient who is having dyslipidemia otherwise alcohol should be avoided antioxidants have got a lot of role in prevention of atherosclerosis uh, but it will be very difficult to prove it by lab investigation. So, we can uh, give the patient vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, other omega 3 fatty acids, all these things. In that, omega 3 fatty acids have got very important role to improve the uh, uh, HDL cholesterol. Like fish oil, it has got a very important role in improving the HDL cholesterol. Other things uh, uh, like uh, stop smoking, regular exercise, weight reduction, diabetes control, then drug therapy. And that most important is statins. We will see what is statins. So, there are different classes of drugs which can reduce the cholesterol. In that most important, we will not be discussing all the uh, drugs uh, uh, in controlling the cholesterol. I will be discussing only very few which are very important. In that most important is statins. They are called as HMG coir reductase inhibitors. We have lovastatin, simvastatin, atrovastatin, rosuvastatin, uh, other statins. In that uh, two important drugs are uh, atrovastatin and rosuvastatin. So atrovastatin and rosuvastatin are the major statins among this group that can reduce LDL 18 to 55 percent, triglyceride less than 7 to 30 percent. HDL increase is 5 to 15 percent. But one of the most important complications is it can elevate STO to SGPT in hundreds. No need to worry, it will not produce severe uh, uh, LFT damage. Uh, liver function uh, can be maintained in 100, 200, 300 like that. If it is increasing, we have to simply stop the drug. Another important problem is uh, myositis. You can see some patient will have severe muscle pain after starting statins. We have to see creatine kinase. In that safest option is rosuvastatin. It has got lesser myopathy when we compare with atrovastatin. However, when after starting statins, uh, at least in after two to three weeks, we have to check the patient's STOT, STPT, and CK. If there is an adverse reaction, you can change the drug to some other group of drugs. So that is one important drug, statin. Next important drug is fibrates, phenofibrate, gem fibrosil uh, or other types of fibrates. Phenofibrates 200 milligram per day, gem fibrosil 600 milligram per day. So normally we start statins first and if the triglyceride is very high and it is not getting controlled with the statins we add statins the problem of uh, dual therapy is uh, many patients who is uh, on dual therapy like uh, statin with uh, uh, fibrate they can have higher incidence of uh, myositis so we try to avoid uh, the combination as far as possible but some patients may require dual therapy when the triglycerides are very very high fibrates are the choice uh, when we compare with statins other drugs like uh, Acetamib is one of the important drugs which we use in our clinical practice uh, uh, th that can reduce the LDL 17 percent, triglyceride 7 to 30 percent, HDL increase by 5 to 15 percent. That, uh, that it decreases the absorption of cholesterol. Uh, another important drug is nicotinic acid uh, that also can be tried if there is a problem uh, uh, patient faces after starting statins, if we are not able to continue statin fibrates, we can go for uh, acetamide with uh, nicotinic acid. Another newer drug is PCSK9 inhibitor that is Evlocumab. That is a newer drug that can be tried that reduces LDL by 38 to 72 percent. So higher percentage of reduction is uh, seen in this group of drugs. Triglyceride 2 to 23 percent, HDL increases is 9, 4 to 9 percent. 
So none of the drugs can increase the HDL cholesterol. That's a good cholesterol which protects the heart from the atherosclerosis. So to increase the good cholesterol, we have options like regular exercise, green leafy vegetables and omega-3 fatty acids. Eicosapentaenic acid and de decohexaminic acid are the drugs which come under this class. So this mainly fish oil, these drugs are mainly produced from fish oil so that bad taste can, uh, many patients complain about the bad taste and the gas formed by these drugs are uh, the major, major complaints uh, regarding uh, starting these drugs. So however, the major groups are statins with fibrates. So normally we start uh, simvastatin or rosuvastatin or aterovastatin. Normally many doctors give aterovastatin 10 to 20 milligram evening time or rosuvastatin 10 milligram night. So these are the two important drugs we use in our clinical practice. But in a patient who is having acute event like acute myocardial infarction, acute stroke, the dose is very high. Atrovastatin 80 milligram or rosuvastatin 40 milligram, then step down to 20 milligram atrovastatin, uh, sorry, 40 milligram atrovastatin, then 20 milligram atrovastatin, or rosuvastatin from 40 to 20, 20 to 10. That is a uh, normal uh, reduction. But many uh, patients, after taking this drug for some days, their cholesterol level will come to normal and they suddenly withdraw these tablets uh, so that. Uh, uh, they think that uh, these tablets are reducing the cholesterol and cholesterol will uh, uh, like maintain in this level for many days. It is not like that all these drugs act only for 24 hours. They only reduce the blood cholesterol. It cannot have any permanent role, permanent action on the uh, body system to reduce the cholesterol. So, uh, patient has to take regularly these medici medicines. They can reduce the dose from... Uh, like uh, 82 you reduce to 40, 40 to 20, 20 to 10, uh, 10 to 5, even alternate days also many physicians give. Uh, but suddenly if we stop there will be a, 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 like, a, a, like a sudden increase in the cholesterol. Uh, it's like a rebound. Many, many patients experience this after suddenly stopping or withdrawing uh, statins, their cholesterol levels will shoot up and that can acutely produce atherosclerosis. One more important action of uh, this cholesterol drugs like in myocardial infarction, irrespective of the cholesterol levels, we start statins. That has got an additional act action that is plaque stabilization. That means uh, when the arteries uh, are having plagues, atherosclerotic plagues, anytime this can rupture and block the artery and lead to myocardial infarction. So that plaque has to be stabilized. The action of uh, uh, statins are in two ways. One is it reduces the blood cholesterol. Other one it reduces the, uh, it, it improves the plaque stabilization action. So both, both the actions are important. Now normally we start uh, statins. Uh, we wait for six weeks. Then we need to get the target. Target is uh, we start the uh, uh, drug uh, when the cholesterol levels are LDL cholesterol levels are more than 100 or 130. The target in a normal person has to be less than 100. A patient who is having um, coronary artery disease or stroke, their LDL cholesterol has to be 70. So till that target, we have to continue the same dose. After that, once we achieve the target, we can reduce the dose. Sudden withdrawal of the do uh, statins are not, not at all very good. And during the therapy, we have to monitor SGOT, SGPT and creatinine kinase. Three, these three investigations has to be uh, done regularly and monitor the patient. If the patient is on rosuvastatin, SGOT, SGPT elevation is not, uh, not routinely seen in uh, our patients. Again, CK, initially if the CK is not elevating, we can continue the days for drugs for many days. And remember, suddenly we cannot withdraw, uh, withdraw the drug because uh, these, all these drugs act for 24 to 48 hours, maximum that. After that, uh, uh, there will not be any control over cholesterol. Cholesterol can shoot up. Acetimab is another important drug. It prevents the absorption of cholesterol. So, uh, those, who, those who want to take a, a, a good diet, they may be uh, getting some benefit from this type of drugs. Otherwise, uh, routinely we don't use uh, 
this type of drugs. Niacin can uh, increase the HDL levels, but uh, routinely we don't use these drugs because uh, better than this uh, regular exercise itself can increase the uh, HDL cholesterol, good uh, green leafy vegetables uh, or fish oil can increase the uh, HDL cholesterol. However, this can be uh, uh, given along with the statins to increase the HDL levels because HDL is a good cholesterol, it prevents atherosclerosis. In acute coronary syndrome, we give higher dose of uh, statins that is atrostatin 80 milligram or rosvastatin 40 milligram. Now newer drug we have already discussed that evolocumab given as 140 milligram subcutaneous injection every other week or a monthly injection of 420 milligram can be given. So that can control the cholesterol in many patients who is having very high cholesterol or even statin resistance. There is a concept called a statin resistance. There also these drugs are very useful. They are monoclonal antibodies that can be tried. Only problem is they are very costly. These drugs are extremely costly. So we can use with a little caution. If money is not the factor, we can try these drugs. So we have discussed about atherosclerosis and uh, how to control statins. But what we have to remember is atherosclerosis is produced by cholesterol, high cholesterol. But high cholesterol is not only the reason for atherosclerosis. It's a multifactorial disease. It can be produced by severe stress, uncontrolled diabetes, severe smoking, heavy alcoholism, obesity, sedentary lifestyle. So, so many factors are there to produce atherosclerosis. Cholesterol is only one of the reasons which can produce atherosclerosis. So, only controlling the cholesterol with the drugs that alone will not prevent atherosclerosis. We need to advise the patient to stop smoking, stop heavy alcohol drinking, do regular exercise, good diet, reduce the cholesterol content in the diet, reduce, relieve the stress. All these things are important. That most important is exercise. Many a times we don't advise the patient to take exercise because uh, we think that tablets alone will work. That will not work. We have to advise the patient to take regular activity, physical activity. 30 minutes are important. In that, suppose the patient is walking for 10 minutes and taking rest, another 10 minutes after some time, that is not enough. They have to do regular exercise continuously for 30 minutes in at least 5 to 6 days in a week. That is very, very important. And control the sugar and other diseases like uh, hypertension, diabetes, other conditions also very important. Thank you.